Hi, everyone. I'm excited to be here at QCon North America. And today we're going to tell you about one of the CNCF-6, CNCF-6 runtime. We hope you can learn about the SIG and maybe you get excited about contributing to the SIG or also contributing to one of the projects in the SIG. So our charter. So SIG runtime is there to enable the successful and widespread execution for all kinds of workloads. Uh, and that includes uh, any latency sensitive type of workload or any type of batch workload, or even some really specialized workloads that are maybe related to uh, specific hardware like uh, CPUs or FPGAs, and all of them with cloud native environments in mind. We have two TOC liaisons, CNC, FTOC. Currently, we also have three chairs and also a tech lead. Our meetings are every first and third Thursday of every month, and we meet at 8 a.m. Pacific time. Our communication channels are the email list, and also we have a Slack channel. So what is it? So SIG runtime is at the forefront of the cloud native space. Uh, so we want to reach out to new and exciting projects within the SIG runtime scope. Uh, we want to help increase that contribution to those projects and also contributions to the CNCF. And we also want to support some of those existing uh, projects or other projects help navigate that CNCF universe. Uh, there, there are many projects in the CNCF and it can be quite confusing about which projects are needed for what or what the capabilities are for each one of these projects. We also interact with other relevant six. Uh, so we interact with six that are in different technology spaces like SIG observability or SIG app delivery or other six like SIG uh, contribution strategy, which helps projects set up a framework on how to grow and how to uh, become more popular and get more contributions. Another one of our goals is to educate end users and also educate the community on the projects, on the technologies, and some of the other SIGs and also the CNCF. So in the scope of the SIG, we have several projects. Some of them are in different stages in the CNCF. Some of them are not even in the CNCF. Here are some examples of these projects. For example, Container D or Cryo for runtimes, or K3S and Kubernetes for workload or orchestration, or you have Cube Edge to run workloads at the edge, and so forth. So we also have different areas with where these projects actually fit in. You have the general workload or orchestration area, and Kubernetes, K3S, Volcano are in this area. They allow you to run workloads in cloud native environments. Metal3 or MetalCube.io also is another project that allows you to provision bare metal machines. And that's also in that space. A different area or scope of the SIG is the containers, runtimes, or VMs type of projects. And in this scope or in this area, we have runtimes like Cryo or Container D. We also have things like WebAssembly. In this example, we have WASM3, which is a runtime, or WASCC, which is WebAssembly Secure Capabilities Connector. And we also have container image registry projects like Harbor. Another space is the operating systems for containers. And two examples of these are Flatcar and Talos very lightweight operating systems that are meant to be just to, for running containers. Then the SIG is also interested in projects or has 
and interest in the MLOps edge and AI type of space. There are also some projects that are in that area, for example, Seldom Core that allows you to serve your machine learning models. We have a Cube Edge, which is currently in incubation in the CNCF. And we have something like Fogflow, which is similar to Cube Edge that allows to run workloads uh, at the edge. And then we're also interested in work groups. We currently only have one work group. And as we get more contributors, we would like to have more. But our current work group is the Container Orchestrated Device Work Group. And Renault will talk about this in the presentation. So in the general workload orchestration area, we have a few projects. So one of the projects is Volcano, currently in Sandbox. And this project allows you to run Kubernetes native batch workloads. Uh, you can run different kinds of workloads with scheduling mechanisms. For example, it, provo it provides gang scheduling. It helps you with TensorFlow training. It has custom resource definitions in Kubernetes that allows you to uh, substitute the standard job mechanism in Kubernetes with its own job mechanism that is richer and has more capabilities. You can also use this project to run batch type of processing using specialized hardware like GPUs or FPGAs, and also helps you to handle some of the errors for some of these batch workloads. Currently, this project is in Sandbox. Another interesting project is CADA, and that's Kubernetes event-driven auto-scaling. And this project allows you, allows you to auto-scale your pods or containers and resources, say, in your Kubernetes cluster based on events. And these events can be anything, maybe in a cloud provider service like an AWS uh, queue mechanism or a Kafka queue that it triggers some events or some topics, or maybe you have a, a database trigger that there's some data actually gets stored in the database or some message uh, gets uh, passed to a database. So multiple events can be actually seen and then you can auto scale your Kubernetes cluster of Kubernetes pods based on these events. Typically, it helps to scale function pods. So it, it actually works in that serverless space. It is vendor agnostic and supports multiple cloud, cloud providers and plugins. Another project that is currently in sandbox in the CNCF is metalcube.io. Essentially, this project allows you to provision bare metal machines in your cloud provider like Amazon, where you may have bare metal machines, or just your data center or your colo, where you have your own machines. It makes use of Kubernetes itself to provision these machines. With using the cluster API, another Kubernetes project, it allows you to provision all these nodes. Uh, it could be Kubernetes, uh, nodes uh, running on, on, on bare metal. So it allows you to provision the components like the kubelet and everything that you need to run in a Kubernetes node. Another project that presented, presented in the SIG is the Node Resource Interface. This project allows you to manage resources in Kubernetes nodes. It's an interface for manage these resources. And what are these resources? When you talk about container level resources, you talk about CPU slices or memory slices or even devices on these nodes. So this is a standard way to manage some of these resources and target it you know, for things like Kubernetes. It actually builds on what the container network interface has. So the container network interface or CNI has this plugin me mechanism so it uses the same idea of having plugins for the different resources uh, for each one of these nodes. It's a container D sub project and it's still in the works. So a lot of stuff going on, 
This was started by uh, folks working at Apple right now. And I think it's just early, but it uh, will soon, will soon uh, have more developments. So in the runtime and VMs and container space, there are some other projects. So you have Harbor, which graduated a few months ago. Uh, it's a container image registry and just not a regular, a regular container registry, which is a single uh, process. It's a multi-fold tolerant container registry where it allows you to store your metadata in HA system, high availability systems. It allows you to have a caching system with Redis. Uh, it also allows you to store in multiple nodes uh, using uh, physical volumes. Uh, so it, it allows you to uh, set your container registry behind a load balancer. So a uh, full scale container registry. Currently in graduation or graduated. So uh, interesting project. It's very mature project now. Another interesting project that presented in our meeting is Lupin. And this is uh, an operating system or a kernel or a mini kernel, I would say, uh, that it sits between what a unikernel is and a regular kernel or a regular Linux kernel is. So the idea behind unit kernels is that you package everything together with your application, your system calls, uh, your kernel, everything together and you just run it. And that can be very costly in terms of the tooling and, and it's just not available out there. So this project, it's a different take on that where it actually strips down a regular Linux kernel and it makes a really lightweight and so when you run, it actually doesn't take a lot of time to boot up, but at the same time, it's compatible with the most important or the most popular uh, types of workloads like databases, like um, runtimes for languages. So you can run most of your workloads and you, you don't need to prepackage everything. And at the same is very lightweight. As opposed to a regular kernel, regular kernel can just run everything. You will have some limitations here, but again, you're trying to address more of a, more, the more popular applications that you may run. This is targeted more towards serverless type of workloads where you maybe want to instantiate a VM with a very lightweight kernel just to run a function. So cloud providers have some of these with something like Firecracker but, it, but they don't necessarily have something like Lupin that is a very lightweight kernel that allows you to run, for example, like an AWS Lambda function very quickly or not just one, but like many, many of them at the same time and instantiating them and then tearing them down. So another interesting project that presented is WAS. CC, which is WebAssembly Secure Capabilities Connector. And there's been a lot of buzz about WebAssembly and how that's actually gonna be used to run cloud native environments in the future. And the reason for that is that WebAssembly is a very transferable format. It can actually be run on the web, on web browsers, but it can also be run on systems provided there's a runtime. So it's just like a binary, uh, kind of like you have a Java binary that is interchangeable between what you can run on the web and then you can also run on just regular systems. So this project allows you to connect all of these web assembly modules that you may have, but each one of them having very unique capabilities uh, that are very granular. So you may have uh, just a module that talks directly to your database, but you may also have a module that implements your business logic. So you can couple these, these WebAssembly modules together with something like WA, WASCC. And these are just an example of two WebAssembly modules, but you may want to actually connect hundreds of, these, of these different WebAssembly modules in cloud native environments. So the idea here is to facilitate the connection between these modules and allow you to run a full blown cloud native 
application on a full or a full set of multiple microservices. The other scope uh, that the SIG is actually uh, having presentations for is the operating systems for containers space. Talos is another project that presented and it's a modern operating system that is very lightweight and it's just meant to run containers. It's minimal, it's immutable. It allows you only to interact with it using just regular APIs, or not just you know by SSH or doing an SSH connection to the operating system, but this external way of interacting just using APIs. And the philosophy here is, is that you have more security, but you have more control of what can happen inside that operating system. Uh, and you can do things like MTLS, mutual authentication. Uh, you reduce unknown factors uh, with uh, immutable infrastructure. So the idea is to simplify your infrastructure to run containers. Another project is that presented is Flatcar. And Flatcar is an evolution of CoreOS. CoreOS just reached the end of life. And this is a continuation of CoreOS with more capabilities. They've actually gotten a lot of adoption uh, just because CoreOS uh, also reached um, end of life. And they're not necessarily an API based operating system, but the idea is the same behind CoreOS that you want to have this lightweight operating system just for running containers. And you reduce your attack surface by having less components and just having the components necessary for running your container images. Currently it's getting a lot, of, a lot more popularity and it keeps on growing. The other space where the SIG actually has had presentations is the edge machine learning or MLOps space or AI or artificial intelligence type, intelligence type of workloads. For that, we have a project that uh, is actually an incubation. It's called Cube Edge and Cube, Cube Edge allows you to run workloads at the edge, but also manage to a centralized location uh, using Kubernetes. So everything runs on top of Kubernetes. You have this cloud core component at the central Kubernetes location, and then you have the edge core component running at the edge where your kubelet runs, where you actually run your, your workloads. And that edge component also talks to all these different devices that may be gathering information at the edge. You may have transmitters, sensors, cameras, Bluetooth devices, anything that may be actually gather, gathering data at the edge. Seldon Core, another project, uh, not in the CNCF per se, but they had a presentation in our meeting uh, and they allowed you to serve machine learning models uh, using uh, either a REST API or a gRPC API. So you will build your model, model with some kind of tool. They also have another tool themselves to build it, or you could use something like Kubeflow. And then once you build that model, you need to serve it. And that serving means creating that inference graph or inference on the fly. It supports this very simple inference graph, but it also supports this very complex inference graph if you have these really complex machine learning modules. Interest, interesting project. We have also some other projects coming up uh, that are presented and that we, uh, we actually reached out to. So we have Wasm3, which is a WebAssembly runtime. We have Prow, which is a um, container image registry. We have Kubeflow for running the whole pipeline of machine learning type of uh, workloads. Uh, BerryNet that allows you to run Raspberry Pi type of workloads at the edge, at the edge uh, using AI. Mm, reach out maybe to cloud kernels, which is a, a a team working on different cloud kernels, so minimizing kernel uh, type of projects. And Crosslet, it's another project from Microsoft that helps you run WebAssembly modules on Kubernetes. So it allows you to substitute 
that kubelet with a WebAssembly module, and then that could talk to Kubernetes or be managed by Kubernetes. So lots of interesting stuff. And I think um, that's about it that I have for uh, the SIG itself. And now I'll hand it off to Renault, and he will talk about the Container Orchestrated Workgroup. Thank you, Ricardo. Let's talk about the Container Orchestrated Device Workgroup, or COD Workgroup. We are a small group of device vendors, container runtime maintainers, and contributors, as well as community SIG members. The problems that we're trying to solve uh, is related to the fact that we've seen an exponential usage of devices in the past five years, from uh, AI, machine learning, deep learning, to network data plane or uh, encryption, decryption acceleration, devices such as FPGAs, GPUs, NICs, or even ASICs have become quite ubiquitous in the data center. And so the chart of the world group is really to enable uh, device support across the cognitive space. What that means is that we're trying to enable these new workloads, we're trying to make it so that you as a user or a cluster administrator have a production experience. And being uh, as, as users as well as vendors and uh, cluster administrators, we have a feel for what uh, the problems are. And so we've actually set up a roadmap uh, that is kind of layered so that you can build on top of each brick. Uh, the first problem that we're trying to solve really is the ability to actually expose a device to a container runtime. And the reason we're trying to solve that problem first is that the space is very fragmented. Kubernetes has a concept of device plugin, while Nomad has its own concept of device plugin, very different. Docker has a concept of entry plugin mechanism, while Podman has a concept of hooks. And LXC has even its own concept of hooks. And um, all these different, um, or all these differences across the space makes it very difficult for vendors to provide a uniform experience for users across these different projects. And that makes it very difficult to provide some features or the same features across these projects, meaning that some projects have different capabilities than others. Um, and so the next problem that you want to solve or that we want to be able to solve is that when you are offloading compute or a task to the device, one of the main reasons you are doing that is speed. And choosing the right CPU, choosing the right memory, choosing the right NIC, or choosing the right device is very important. Uh, if you have the wrong CPU and the wrong device, it can sometimes destroy your performance and nullify the effect of actually uh, offloading the compute to another device. The last problem when you are in a data center and you have, for example, um, tasks that need to be uh, spread across multiple nodes, tasks that need to talk to each other, most of the time uh, you want these nodes to be close to each other. And for example, on the same racks. And so figuring out where are the right knobs, where are the right policies, where are the right extension points is very important. Uh, it's a hard problem, but it's a very exciting problem. And so the first problem that we've tackled, as mentioned on our roadmap, is really the ability to expose a device to a container. And our answer to that is CDI, the Container, or, um, the container Device Interface. Uh, it's a unified plugin architecture for runtimes. It's based on CNI, the Container Network Interface. Um, and it basically tells the runtime what are the devices that are available on the node and what are the operations that the runtime needs to perform to expose that device. And so here on the slide, what you can see is that we have one um, device vendor, a vendor.com slash device, so one device kind, and it exposes one single device, my device, uh, and the operation that must be performed here is to expose to device nodes and slash dev. Um, and so from a user perspective, what this really means is that instead of typing my container run dash dash device dev uh, my card uh, and dash dash device dev my card render, um, what you'll be typing is really just Docker or my container runtime run uh, dash dash device my device and then my image and my CLI command. Um, from a roadmap perspective, what we're really, um, we've, we've created this roadmap to give you a feel for where we are and where we're going. Um, we are still in the um, 
um, stage zero, we are building POCs. We have two POCs on Cloud9 and ContainerD. We are still building the formal spec, whether in Go and in writing. And we are talking about the idea with different people. Um, what we're hoping to achieve probably and hopefully by the end of the year is the integration and runtimes maybe as an alpha feature um, is the ability or the Kubernetes cap um, and the intersection or talking about CDI and how it can enable other powerful IDs such as networking or storage. And the direction that we're going really is integration with many runtimes and having multiple plugins built on top of us. And so we've decided to plant a, a 1.0 flag saying that this, this will be stable, this will be 1.0 as an API uh, when we have two runtimes that are using it, when we have more than three plugins, and when we are better on Kubernetes, giving a feeling for users that this is a feature that is actually going uh, in, in, in a direction that is adoption. And so um, that's CDI, uh, but uh, don't let CDI discourage you. Um, the Codeboard group still has a ton of huge IDs and exciting IDs that haven't been thought through completely. And we'd be super happy to have people contribute, um, just to have a different opinion and a different view of how these ideas should be addressed. Um, we'd be also super happy if you want to give us some feedback on what we've built. Um, and if you think that there's an intersection with your ID, uh, we'd be happy to hear from you. And if you want to integrate or build on top of CDI uh, or our IDs, feel free to just drop by and we'd be happy to um, hear from you. Um, and that's it. That was the Sig Runtime presentation. Um, go on cncf.io to see Sig Runtime's uh, um, description. Uh, you can join the Slack. You can also look up the GitHub that has a lot of information. And we have bi-weekly meetings on Thursdays. Feel free to join the Sig Runtime bi-weekly meetings. Um, join our community and give us some feedback. Thanks a lot.